brought to you by Gospel of God's Grace Ministries. Prophecy. There's, there's a problem. Something's happening, you know, like your uterus. Yes, man of God. What is, what is going on? Um, I went to the doctor. Boban Tabar, I actually went there for the scan. Boban Tabari, my uterus is it's too small, so I would not be able to conceive. Touch your uterus. So don't worry, you will conceive. You have a child. Amen. Yes. So the time, the period between now and you having a baby boy, leave it for God. Hallelujah. Five months later, after receiving prophecy from the man of God, Mr. and Mrs. Manna Toko returned to 3G Ministries to confirm the prophecy. My name is Olebogeng Lebu Manna Toko, and with me here is my husband, Bami Manna Toko from Donwata. We are here to confirm the word of prophecy that I received, rather that we received from the man of God, Prophet Cedric, on the 24th, July 2015. The man of God said, the lady who was here there is a problem with your uterus. And I did confirm that yes, it's true. Um, I received the prophecy on the 24th, July 2015. I conceived around October 2016. As you are standing here, are you pregnant? Yes, man, God, I am very pregnant. Pregnant for how long? Um, five months along. What is it that the man of God said to you the child would be? The man of God has said the child shall be a boy. And what is the scan saying? The scan and the doctor is saying the baby growing inside of me is a boy. And are you saying, are you saying that the picture where he's saying, they, we see Jeremiah there? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yes, man of God is Jeremiah inside of me. Oh, that's Jeremiah. Oh, okay. Brought to you by Gospel of God's Grace Ministries, bringing a hope to the hopeless. The grace of God is sufficient for you. Good morning, church. Good morning. The grace of God is sufficient for all of us. Uh, we are Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Manatoku. We are from Tonata Village, but we live and work in Khaburoni. Uh, yes, my, my name is uh, Bami. Uh, next to me is my, my dear wife, Ole Boheng. And uh, it also gives me great pleasure to introduce to you, people of God, uh, the evidence of God's work in our life and our testimony to you, uh, baby Jeremiah. So we put our hands together beautifully for the miracle of work of Jesus Christ. Uh, people of God, uh, let me take you back uh, to life uh, before Jeremiah. Uh, my wife and I came first to 3G Ministries in 2013. Uh, by then, we were not uh, husband and wife. Actually, we'd been dating for nine years uh, with no marriage in sight. But uh, within the first year of coming to 3G Ministries, we got married. So that was uh, our first testimony, our first breakthrough since coming to 3G Ministries. Shall we put our hands together, people of God, for this wonderful testimony? Uh, people of God, uh, my wife and I, like I indicated, uh, we had been together for so many years. We had wanted to get married. Obviously, you know, we, we had not intended to date uh, for that long, but we had uh, hurdles, we had challenges, uh, financial, you know, we're living so far apart. But uh, we heard of 3G Ministries. She first came to 3G Ministries. Uh, she actually got uh, one of uh, the messages that were being made available here in church. She brought it back to me. We listened to it together. After which, I also followed her to 3G Ministries. We continue coming to listen to the word of encouragement, some of which talked, emphasized more on discipline and uh, being patient. So after coming to church uh, 2013, listening to the encouraging words of the man of God, also listening to testimonies, 
our time indeed came. We managed to secure some finances, money that we thought we actually never had, but in actual fact, we always had money. It's only that, you know, our focus, there was a hindrance that us personally were not able to get over. But because of God, a lot of things that were standing before us to get married and make things right, they got out of the word. And we indeed, in July 2014, we got blessed, we got married, we became husband and wife by the grace of God and the prayers of the man of God, Prophet Cedric. Yes, uh, after getting married, people of God, I think you know that there are expectations, expectations that we impose on ourselves and the people that live around us, they also have uh, the same expectation that after getting married, uh, babies, children should come. So after getting married, we also tried out for a baby. This was in 2014. We tried, nothing happened. But we're still coming to church. 2015 also came. The first few months, nothing was happening. People of God, I, might, I, I should confess that, and I believe uh, this is a, a condition, a weakness that all of us go through the weakness of impatience. Yes, you are married, yes, you come to church, but uh, that which you seek, if it doesn't come, you sort of, you know, become impatient. So we a bit, our faith was affected a little bit, although we never stopped coming to church. So as we are continuing to try out for a baby, uh, we eventually took the decision to go to the hospital to find out exactly what it is that is hindering us from conceiving. Uh, we went to the doctor, uh, tests were done on my wife. Uh, when the results came, they sat us down and they told us that uh, my wife's uterus was so small that she, was, she would not be able to, to, to carry full-term pregnancy. So we found ourselves in a situation where now we didn't know what to do. We asked the doctor, so now that you've told us this news, what, what do we do next because we still want a baby? Uh, she told us that, you know, for her it was the first time to see that kind of situation. And uh, there was really no guarantee medically that, you know, she could give us anything that will cause my wife to successfully fall pregnant and give birth. According to uh, the doctors, uh, those that you know, in the world we feel they know everything medically, biologically. There was really no sign that indeed my wife will fall pregnant. So tell us, what went on through you as the man of God was giving your wife this word of prophecy? There was the statement of your daughter and also there was the voice of God from the servant of God. Tell us, what, what was your state at that particular moment when we were hearing this word from the man of God? Uh, I think uh, it changed a lot inside of me. Uh, that uh, word of prophecy, you know, it strengthened my faith. Uh, it gave me and my wife hope that, you know, we should not uh, rely solely on men, but, you know, God has the final say in what happens in our lives. So really, my, my faith was, was lifted up, uh, you know. Shall we put our hands together, people of God, for Master Jesus. Yes, sir. can we hear from your, your wife as she was also part of the whole miracle that you are testifying about? The grace of God is sufficient for you, madam. You're welcome to please greet the church. Introduce yourself once again, and you're welcome to take us through the, this wonderful testimony. The grace of God is sufficient for you and I, church. Amen. Good morning. Um, we are Mr. and Mrs. Manatoko, as my husband has already said. I am Ole Boheng Lebo, short. So your husband has been sharing with the congregation the testimony or experience uh, where you are coming from in relation to the, the fruit of the womb. Madam, you're welcome to tell us because you are the one who was going through that. Tell us, when the doctor was telling you that your uterus is too small, it won't be able to sustain the, the, the full-time pregnancy. What went on within you in that particular moment? Um, as a human being and especially as a woman, I was very devastated, I, but also at the same time, I, I had hope.
because I know I'm a child of God and I know that I'm a daughter of a prophet. Um, when she told us that uh, my uterus was way too small and hence we would have problems conceiving, we, well, we believed what she said because she is a doctor. And um, we told her well, it is fine uh, and we thanked her for the results that she gave us. Now coming into God's presence, you made the able servant of God. He gives you the word of prophecy and prays for you and confirm to you according to the spirit of God that you will conceive. What went on within you? When the man of God gave me the word of prophecy, actually I had brought a friend of mine, as I had said in our previous testimony. And when I went to assist her, because it was her first time here, as I went back to my chair, the man of God told me that there is something going on in my uterus. And I did confirm that, yes, I did go to the hospital and the doctor had said, my uterus is too small and we shall have problems conceiving. I, when the man of God gave me those words, I, in fact, when he said it, uh, inwardly, I, I, I knew it was a confirmation of what the doctor was saying. We had to go to the doctor for her to give us that report so that when we come to the presence of God, God through his servant shall confirm his word. And so when the man of God gave me that prophecy, a new solution had come. Shall we put our hands together, people of God, if you believe that solution is on your way in the Sunday of rescue. Shall we put our hands together beautifully for the miracle work of Jesus Christ? Um, because I had never been pregnant before, I didn't know I was expecting uh, until I was around eight weeks. So when I went to the gynecologist, when she did the, the scan, uh, she told me that I was, was eight weeks pregnant. And by the time she did that, according to her, she was supposed to see something that indeed there's a child growing inside of me. But there was nothing at all. She could not see anything. But she, she did tell me that, yes, you are pregnant, but there's nothing that I can see inside of you. Probably you should go back and come after two weeks. Uh, we went back home. When we got home, we took the living water, we took the living sticker, we ministered it, and I spoke to the child that was growing inside of me. I told him, I know that you are inside of here, and I know you probably hid for the doctor because I didn't know that I was expecting. But I want you, when you go back for the next appointment with the doctor, make, make yourself visible to the doctor and the scan. That was you talking to the child in your new child's by then. Is that what you are testing to the congregation? Yes, it is, evangelist. So we put our hands together, beautifully people of God for Master Jesus. And indeed, he had, when we went back to the doctor after two weeks, when she did the scan, the baby was visible to the skin and the doctor, you know, he, she was amazed and she, she said to me, you are a very lucky woman. But I said to her, I'm a very blessed child of God. Shall we put our hands together, people of God, for this wonderful confession of faith. So when the doctor was saying that you are a very lucky woman, you said, no, I am a blessed child of God. Is that what you are saying to the congregation? Yes, it is, evangelist. A good confession of faith indeed. Shall we put our hands together once again for Master Jesus. We continued with the pregnancy. Uh, it, it went on. Uh, it was a smooth sailing, as I had said in our previous testimony when we came here, when I was five months along. Um, and then uh, after the testimony of uh, our pregnancy, um, everything was okay. I had even thought that uh, I would have a small bump, you know, that's what we all wish for, especially when it's your first child because I didn't want to look so huge. And, but when my, at around eighth, the eighth month, the baby Jeremiah started, you know, <laughs> uh, he started doing wonders and I, I, I couldn't understand what was happening, but I knew because it was, a, it was a child from God, this had to happen. One thing that we really want to understand also in this wonderful testimony, tell us, madam, we believe that uh, during the course of your pregnancy, you would go to the doctor to consult even your doctors. What were they saying now when they were seeing you now, uh, surpassing their expectations? Because you were saying, initially your husband was saying that the doctor was saying that you won't be able to, looking at the condition of your uterus, you won't be able to carry a full-time pregnancy 
this. Now, when they were seeing uh, the, 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 the months passing by, but you are still fit and strong, you're saying that the pregnancy was smooth sailing. What were they saying? Were they, not, were they not amazed or shocked at what was happening? The, the two doctors were greatly amazed. In fact, the, the first doctor that we went to was a general practitioner, the one who did the test and told me that my uterus was small. And then she referred me to the gynecologist, whom when we, we, we found that we are pregnant, we started working with. So as, as we went for the checkups uh, every month, she told me, in fact, I was her favorite patient. She told us that she looked forward to our monthly visits because of what was going, what was going in, uh, on in, in, inside of me. The baby was growing so big. The, the baby was not giving us problems and the, the doctor was so amazed and she would tell me that this child that you are going to give birth is, is a miracle. And it was the first time that I heard my doctor using the word miracle. Madam, you're welcome to continue with your wonderful testimony. The months passed by, uh, six, seven, eight, three weeks before my delivery, uh, EDD, uh, baby Jeremiah was weighing 3.76. And no, in, before that, my doctor had said she, she didn't think the baby would be above 3.5. And um, three weeks before my EDD, when we went for the scan, baby Jeremiah was 3.76. And now she started panicking because she had told me that the baby would be 3.5 or less. And so we went on, we pushed, and she told me that she wants me to go for the natural way. And I, I also told her that that's exactly what we want, nothing else. So three, from 3.76, the next uh, checkup, Jeremiah was three, after two weeks, mind you, he was 3.9 now. And I also was starting to panic now because I have so much wanted to go the natural route. So she told me that because it's my first child and the baby is becoming too big now, it will be very impossible for me to do the natural way. But then she advised me that I go back and because I think I was on in the 38th week, she said I should go back home and come the following week where I'll be 39. And the 39th week we came back, baby Jeremiah now was, uh, in fact, it was the 40th week. He was now 4.4. And yes, you could hear your reaction and that was ours as well. My doctor is a very friendly person. We had grown to be friends as the pregnancy went along. So on, the, uh, on that day when we went into her office, she was a totally different person. I could see panic in her face and uh, she was not the, norm the usual person that I, I had come to know. So when we sat down, she, she, she sat us both, my husband and I, and she told us that, you know what, this is your first child and <laughs> I have never seen this. And uh, I would advise you as a doctor that you don't go the natural way as we had previously desired. So we, we told her that we had to think about it. And so she said, okay, fine, it's, it's okay, you can go. When we left her office, we, we called the, the church. We told them about the situation and they asked us if we have the living assets and yet we did tell them that yes, we do. So we went home, we prayed. And after the prayer, I said, you know what? This is the very same uterus that the doctor said, it is way too small, it, it will not be able to carry a child. And now I'm carrying a 4.4 child. This is my God showing off, nothing else. Shall we put our hands together, people of God, for this wonderful testimony. After saying that, I, I had to calm down because we too, we were now starting to panic uh, because it was a first experience. So, and having said that to myself, I had to, to relax and be calm. And then we called the doctor because you know, these people, they are also servants. They know what they're doing. And when they advise you, uh, especially uh, after so much experience, we hear the advice. And then the next morning, 
No, a day after that, we went to the hospital. It was a Wednesday. Uh, when we got there, we were taken to the waiting room for, before we could go to the theater. And we waited, I think we waited for about two hours or so. Be, before then, I, I had had a dream where the man of God, I think two weeks before, prior to the delivery, I had a dream where the man of God was telling, because I had started panicking now, the man of God told me that, uh, my sister, the, the doctors at Bogamoso would be amazed at your delivery. And so when we got to the waiting room, I, I remembered the words of the man of God and I relaxed and I became calm. So we went to the theater. You know, what we see in the movies is it's nothing compared to what I saw on that day because it was reality now. There were so many doctors, there were so many, so many machines and uh, I started panicking. And um, they, 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 they just told me it's gonna be okay. And I also believed that it's gonna be okay because I'm a child of God. So they went ahead with the procedure. And when I lay there, I remembered the, the words of the man of God that he told me in a dream that the doctors here shall be amazed. And I, I took a short prayer, and um, within, within five minutes, everything was done, and I heard baby Jeremiah's cry for the first time. So we put our hands together, people of God, for Master Jesus. Loud for the miracle of Jesus Christ. And, um, <laughs> As I had said, baby Jeremiah was a very big child. There were about 15 of us patients on that day who were giving birth. And out of the 15 kids that were born on that day, baby Jeremiah was the biggest child on that day. And he was nicknamed Big, Bo big Baby. Shall we put our hands together, people of God, for Master Jesus. Louder for the miracle worker, Jesus Christ. Uh, all the nurses and doctors that were there, they were amazed when he, when he, when he came out. They were wondering how I was, uh, I was able to carry such a big baby to, to, uh, until the ninth month. Shall we put our hands together for Master Jesus? Yes, indeed, that reaction, uh, it confirmed the word of uh, the prophet that he said in a dream that they would be amazed, and indeed they were. And because baby Jeremiah was a big child, they said uh, his sugar levels were, were very low. So as soon as he came out, he was taken to the nursery where he, he was given milk immediately so that his sugar levels, uh, sugar levels could stabilize. Shall we put our hands together, people of God, for this wonderful testimony. <laughs> Madam, now you are testing to the congregation that the little boy that your husband is holding is this miracle baby, the baby Jeremiah, born out of the word of prophecy you received from the able servant of God, Prophet Cedric. Yes, evangelist, the cute little boy in my husband's hands is baby Jeremiah. Shall we put our hands together, people of God, for Master Jesus, louder for the miracle worker, Jesus Christ. Yes, people of God, remember the man of God in the prophecy said, a baby boy at God's time shall be born. And here with us we have baby boy Jeremiah Manatoko, born in Bokamuso, weighing 4.1 kg. Shall we put our hands together? You can see the evidence of Master Jesus, that beautiful baby boy, Jeremiah. Shall we put our hands together? The evidence that the word of prophecy has come through to this family. Shall we put our hands together as we are celebrating this wonderful and beautiful testimony? <laughs> Madam, tell us now, after seeing the glory of God, the hand of God, the, 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 the manifestation of God's power in your life, what did the whole thing really bring to your faith? I, in fact, I'm becoming emotional because we, we, had, we had no hope, I, but also we had hope because we, we are born of Christ. Um, 
what had happened in our lives, what has happened in my family had boosted the both of us, the both of us, our faith and our love for Christ and knowing that, that God does love us and not just, uh, not just us, but each and every one of us who are seated here today. Shall we put our hands together, people of God, for Master Jesus for this wonderful testimony. Madam, before you share with us your word of encouragement, we are also seeing pictures on the board. How do you relate them with your beautiful testimony? Um, this is me here. I was eight months pregnant. Uh, as you see, I was that big because I was carrying a big child. Uh, here, it is me again. A few hours before I went to the theater room for delivery. And here now is baby Jeremiah immediately after coming into this world. Shall we put our hands together? You can see, people of God, this is the evidence of Master Jesus. Louder for the miracle worker, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Madam, we believe that having seen the hand of God, the move of God that changed your story, that rescued you from your problem. We believe that you're in a better position now to encourage the church because right now there are people who are going through so many situations in need of rescue. They are in the very same place where you got your rescue. What can be your word of encouragement to the church? Um, my word of encouragement is, is that we, we go through different sufferings, varied and diverse um, I believe that God lets them happen in our lives so that we may be able to one day encourage one another, especially those that are going through the same situation that you are going. I know there is somebody here now and today who is seated somewhere who is going through what we went through in the past. And because of what we had to go through, standing here today, we are here to encourage you because God had let that situation for us to happen so that today we are here encouraging somebody. And, you know, he, I believe that varied and diverse as our sufferings are, our blessings also are so that for one purpose and one purpose alone, that God is alive and that God, he is God and God alone. Thank you. Shall we put our hands together, people of God, for this wonderful word of encouragement? Shall we put our hands together beautifully for this wonderful testimony? My word of encouragement, people of God, is that <clears throat> whatever miracle you are looking for, whatever breakthrough you are chasing, uh, know that is not entirely up to God. You also have a role to play. And our role as Christians is obedience to God's word, is to exercise patience when we are undergoing trials. And also, we should allow God to do his part, which is his ability to make the miracle come true and to allow him to rescue today and forevermore. We thank God for your wonderful testimony, an encouraging testimony indeed. And we thank God for these wonderful words of encouragement that you've just shared with us. We pray that God may give you the grace to lead and to help Jeremiah to grow in the way of the Lord so that he may keep on witnessing the grace of God even in his own life. All for the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brought to you by Gospel of God's Grace Ministries. Bringing hope to the hopeless. The grace of God is sufficient for you.